Hello and welcome back to another Christie Review video. Right here with your boy. It's your boy. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at the some uh, fountain pens. I've been doing a lot of fountain pen reviews recently just because I've been buying a lot of fountain pens. Um, but I've gotten a chance to use these fountain pens and these are special fountain pens. They have a special nib on them. Uh, but first, let's go through the name. The name of these are the Sailor Fude de Manon. And I hope I'm saying that right. Fude de Manon. They are a Japanese-made uh, fountain pen. And what makes these pens so special is that they have what is called a Fude nib. So if you can see that right there, all that means is that the nib on the pen is bent upwards. So if you buy one of these pens, know that your pen is not messed up. The nib is not messed up on your pen, it's just the way that the nib is made. The nib is made to be bent up like this. So um, first of all, just the difference between these two pens. It's only a small difference. The difference is the degree at which the nib is bent. So if you can see the pin on the top, the blue sailor pin. Let me see if I can get yeah. The blue sailor pin is bent up at a smaller degree than the pin on the bottom. If you can see that. So that's the only difference between these two pins. Other than that, both of the pins write exactly the same. Uh the ink flow is exactly the same. But you uh, the only difference that this changes is when you're using the pen. So the style in which you uh, hold the pen is going to make the difference between the two ways that the nibs are bent. So let's go through the outside of the pen first. The build of this pen is uh, it's an all plastic pen. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. And uh, the pens are... Like I said, the body of the pen is plastic. The feed is plastic. Of course, the section that you grip onto is plastic. And I really think that the nib on this thing is, um, is plastic as well. Um, it does not feel like a metal nib. Like I feel like I could break this. Uh, fairly easily. It doesn't feel very strong at all. Um, it doesn't say what kind of material that is made out of, but it doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel like any of the other nibs that I have. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is uh, you know on the lower end of the sailor pen selection. Uh, it's a good starter food a pen. Uh, but again, it's plastic. Let me try to get this back in now. And all I did to remove that, by the way, was pinch and pull. If you pinch it and you pull it, then it'll come right out. Um, yeah. And then slide it back in there, and it's ready to go again. So these are medium fine uh, nibs. A medium fine fude nib. And... All that means is basically when you're using the pen, you can get uh, line strokes between medium and fine because you get varied uh, line widths with this pen. Uh, this pen does not come with an ink converter. The pen comes with ink cartridges like this. The ink cartridge is not waterproof. So if you plan on using this for your watercolor painting, know that the cartridge is not waterproof. So. If that's the style that you're going for, you can, you know, easily use this cartridge to get uh, non-waterproof ink. But if you would like to change the ink inside of the pen and use your own ink, you have to buy an ink converter. Okay, there's a special Sailor. Uh, yeah, it says Sailor on the converter. I don't know if you can see that. But... There's a special uh, a special ink converter made especially for the Sailor P 
pin. So this is the ink converter, what it looks like when you buy it individually. So just know that you have to buy ink converters separately. If you order this on the internet, make sure you buy your converter to come with it. So you're not stuck using an ink that you don't want to use. Uh, other than that, I mean, the pen is um, its pretty straightforward. There's nothing spectacular about the pen because of the, uh, the build. Uh, it's all plastic, like I said. So there's nothing that's going to just blow you away about the build design of this pen. Um, even when you're looking at the, the nib, I mean, the nibs look nice because they're gold but they're not like a gold plated or anything like that. So now we're gonna take a look at the uh, size comparison. We're gonna size these up next to some other pens. So also with this Sailor Fountain pen, as you can see, it does not have a clip on the pen. There's no clip, but what there is, is this small like a bulge in the cap. And what that does, it keeps the pen from rolling around. But so there isn't a clip. So if you if you want a clip, it's not gonna come on this pen. You gotta get a different pen. Okay, sizing this thing up against some other pens. Right here we have the Lamy Safari, uh, the Twisby Eco, and the Pilot Prayer pen. And as you can see, the uh, the Sailor Found pen is a lot longer cap than all of these pens. And these are. A pretty decent length especially the Safari and the Twisby Eco so let's uncap the pins okay so just looking at it again uh, the Lemmy Safari and the Twisby Eco are about the same size and compared to those it is a you know a good size above I mean lengthwise a good a, a good length longer than those pins and then last but not least we'll post all of the pins okay so as you can see again the sailor is longer than all of the other pins the longest fountain pen that i have right now so keep that in mind that it's a very long pen um, when you're holding the pen I would not post this pen. I would not put the cap on the back of this pen just because there's no need to. Uh, it doesn't change the weight of the pen. The cap isn't heavy because it's plastic, but it does just make the pen kind of like silly <laughs> looking. Like it looks really funny, like how long this pen is. So that's just my personal preference is just to leave it unposted or take the cap off the back and use the pen like it is, like that. It's a lot easier to use. So now we're gonna get into a writing sample. So one second, I'm gonna get a sheet of paper and then we're gonna get to it. Okay, now we have a piece of paper. The paper that I'm using today is the, uh, is the Canton uh, XL Mixed Media Paper. Uh, again, this is a food a nib. So what I'm gonna show you is what you can do with this type of nib. What you can do is uh, you can make thin lines like this or you can make thick lines like that. And what that is is based on the direction that you hold the pen. If you hold the pen more vertical you'll get thin strokes. If you hold the pen more horizontal, you'll get thick strokes. The one thing about this fountain pen in particular, it doesn't happen with the green fountain pen, with the more intense um, bend in the nib. But what happens with this fountain pen is if you can see right there, the feed, all right, if you can see the feed, the feed and the nib, when you hold the pen and you want to do broad strokes with this pen, the feed right here rubs against the paper. And when it rubs against the paper, you get this 
extra line under the line that you're drawing. Okay, and this is unwanted. This is something that it's, I mean, it's just not very nice. They obviously didn't think about that when they were building this pen, uh, that the feed was too close to the, the, uh, the bend in the nib. So every time, or most of the time, not every time, but when you do strokes like that, you see right there, you get a line under the broad strokes. So that's the one thing that I just, you know, the, uh, the downside of this pen is just that extra little, ugh. And uh, the pen overall, it's not, um, it's consistent. The ink flows consistently. Um, the ink flows consistently and um, it doesn't, you can move it pretty quickly and it doesn't uh, dry up on you. But again, the only thing is that it's not very wet. It's not gonna be a, a super wet pen, which means that the ink is not gonna flow uh, really thickly. Yeah, I guess that's the word. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna flow heavily out of the pen, put it like that. It's gonna, uh, you know, it's gonna come out, but it's not gonna be just like really, really dark because of the amount of ink that's coming out of the pen. So let's draw like, uh, let me draw some buildings. What you can do with this pen is like, if you're drawing a building like this, or if you're drawing anything else, you put a little building over here too. A little secondary house. Okay. Okay. So if you're drawing uh, something like this, what you can do is, as you can see, all of these broad, I mean, all of these strokes so far have been thin strokes. But then what you can do is since the food a nib has the bent edge on it, you can go back and you can add thicker strokes like this. And then what you can do with that is you can create shadows. Right, you can create You can create shadows with your pen. Because of the thicker edge on the uh, on the nib, it lays down more ink so you can get broader strokes, which gives the uh, effect of depth or light. So that's the one thing that you can do with this pen and it's pretty fun to use. Another thing is as you're drawing, if you change the way that you're holding the pen, you can get variations in your line. So you can go from thin to thick in one stroke. So that can add some flair to your drawings, which is the cool thing about this pen and uh, I'm gonna make another video soon talking about that I think the Fude nib pen is uh, one of the best pens, one of the best fountain pens for artists. And that's just because of the line variation that you can achieve. And uh, for me, I like the uh, unpredictability, if that's the word, it's unpredictable, yeah. I like the unpredictability of these pens when you use them especially if you're using them quickly. Uh, sometimes your lines might, you might get line variation and you know, it just happens. And I like that about these pens. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap up this video. 
uh, review of the Fude uh, Demena Demenin. If I'm saying that wrong, try to correct me in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about these pins. Do you have Do you have a uh, Sailor Fude Nib pin? And if you do, do you like the uh, smaller degree pin or the higher degree nib? Which one's your favorite? Or if you don't use these at all, what's your favorite pin to draw with? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And uh, also make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can be in tune when I drop some more uh, art reviews and also do some more art tips and tricks, okay? I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped you out. Please stay tuned for more videos. Thank you. Peace.